So, Ian, obviously you're here, Bournemouth Football Club. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us here. No it's really nice to see your kit out on the field. Can you give us a bit of an insight? What you're doing, where you're at with things. I think you know you're doing some expansion here. Mm -hmm. Can you talk us through the pitch and just give us an idea? Yeah. So uh, behind us is the Vitality Stadium pitch. Um, been pretty much the same for nearly nine years now. Um, sand, sand-based constructed pitch with um, gravel carpet drainage okay. at the bottom, um, and then a stitched artificial fibres in the top. Um, got three guys here looking after this state this uh, this site uh, and they're here through the week weekends games and yeah, everything else yeah, that goes yeah. on and they full-time those guys yeah yep. three full-time mm -hmm. yeah and then we have a team of uh, about 14 on a match day that come and help as well so right, during the game so they'll put all the divots back <laughs> that's together. a big part of the day isn't it yeah it's quite a long day there match day so uh, yeah we need a bit of help for that one so yeah they're, they're imperative to the team really they, those lot. and then obviously Tractors behind us, running some of the Trimble kit on it. Yeah, so we've got two Kubota LX401s, both with uh, the Trimble system on it. So you've got um, a 350 display, yeah. now 500 on there, or yeah. 900, sorry, with the um, auto steer That's system. It. That's right, yeah. Um, and say so at the beginning, we just thought we'd use it for seeding in the renovations, because that's one of the trickiest jobs to try and seed yes. into pure sand. Um, Is that a visibility yeah, issue? 100%, yep. Yeah, 100%, um, yeah. You know, you can see your first pass because you see your, your dimples, but then after that, you've sort of just got a massive sea of dimples, so it's quite tricky, that one, to make sure you don't miss. So, yeah, we thought we'd go with it with that. Um, bought it new with the tractors, yes. um, which worked work nicely, fitted by yourselves. And then since then, we've sort of expanded and then thought, well, what else can we use it for? Um, and now we're using it for spraying, um, which has helped massively, especially for saving time for marking out. Um, and then uh, fertilizer spreading as well with a Vicon um, at the training ground. That's that's again saved a lot of time between the four pitches there now. Um, so before we would have um, done it by um, walk behinds and probably two hours a pitch at best. Yeah. Uh, and now we're probably looking at two hours for, the, for all four pitches. Yeah, so, so labor brilliant. saving, diesel yeah. saving, you know, a huge amount of time saved yeah. to get that achievement. And so you do it obviously to create a pitch like this, mm. It's not a five-minute job. No, you know, no, it's yeah. constant work required to get it to this sort of level, and it does look amazing. I must admit. Yeah, no, um, well, yeah. Beginning of the season at the moment, so it's looking as good as it can. <laughs> um, yeah, as we go through the season, it will obviously deteriorate a little bit, and that's our job to make sure we keep it keep it up to levels. And as we said earlier, so you're looking at sort of your fertilizer side, the spray side, and again, you're looking at the regulations and ensuring that you're committing to looking after your environmental impact mm -hmm. and again by reducing overlap with the system um, ensuring that your sort of record keeping's there it's obviously a key part for you yeah so again something we haven't really thought about at the beginning maybe we're just thinking more for efficiency to have the system in terms of saving time um, but then you're starting to think okay well we're not overlapping as much anymore so for example the seeding we're not wasting as much or as as, yeah, as little seed as we'd had before so that's one, you know, quite easy, yes. simple part of it. Spraying, I mean, ho hopefully it's going to rule out, um, sort of rule out our issues, like if we have a an overlap or whatnot. So that's that's helped quite nicely with that as well. Um, and the, yeah, the the fertilizer spreading on the on the tractor mounted stuff is yeah, it's really been quite quite a lot of time saved with that. Yeah. That's a thing. But again, yeah, we're not wasting that product where we go, oh, have we done this bit? Have we not? Did we quite get to the edge? We've got the screen that shows us on the spread width and the lengths that we've already already done. So, And in terms of the club itself, you new or expanding training ground, is that how many pitches have you got so far at the training yeah, ground? Yeah, so we're sort of in a programme of building a new training ground. We've built four so far and our main building um, for our first team and, and uh, players and staff to use. We've got our own facilities there as well. Um, we've got two artificial pitches um, as well and then we've got about another eight pitches to build yet for the academy side. So hopefully within due course we'll be building them. And obviously upgrading us our, our software our systems and machinery. again sort of using the kit down there as well on the training grounds you know, yeah. same sort of principle as you see behind us yeah it's probably more it's helping more down there than it is here because you're only one pitch you're really only getting you know, the benefit of yeah, the one absolutely. pitch over there multiple pitches you're getting but you move benefit. the tractors between the sites don't you yeah so we can still yes yeah, so we've got one at each site um unfortunately it works in the stadium here which is quite nice yes um but yeah, we can. When we've got uh, when we're doing renovations, we will either drive or transport the tractor to the other site and use it alongside the other one as well. Yeah. So Ian, you're the head groundsman here at mm -hmm. Bournemouth FC. Yep. So again, look, it's a privilege to see this here today. Um, we're used to grasp, but maybe not to the level of management that that you have here. So mm -hmm. maybe just describe your what you have to manage and you know what's key about a good surface. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we've got. So yeah, we're, we're trying to get as uh, thick as we can you know, at the grass surface, obviously for the for the level of foot we play. And we sow with 100% ryegrass, four different cultivars of that. Um, 
do an initial seed at the beginning of the season when we've dug the pitch up and renovated it, and then we do a few overseeds during the season as well. Yeah. Um, bit of a tech, bit of a task, obviously, to keep it against the amount of football we have here, but um, we we seem to just about keep up with it. That, yeah. That sort of thing. So yeah, and uh, we cut the height. Uh, the height cut, sorry, is uh, 23 mil at the moment. Okay. And then we might go up a little bit during the winter just to protect it a little bit. And yeah. Then as we come back out of that, we go down again. Yeah. So there's no weeds, obviously, so no. <laughs> you don't want any. Well, how do you keep them out of here? Yeah, so uh, hopefully we don't have to spray for them. Yeah. Uh, hopefully every time we've obviously established the initial grass uh, seed uh, deep, you know, thick enough so that we don't get that migration of weeds in there. If we do have a few, we will hand weed it. So we just as we're diviting the pitch, maybe during a, after a game, mm. um, we'll go along and we just pick them out. So yeah. the, the odd one here or here and there, but yeah. not too many yet. Okay. So is it a sand-based pitch? Yeah, 100% sand-based pitch yeah. with gravel carpet underneath and undersoil heating it as well. Mm. And on the top, we have uh, plastic artificial fibres stitched in as well. Okay. Yeah. So again, we're looking down. You said there's no organic matter. Is there much or no. in, in your sward? Yeah, so... Uh, you don't want the, it, do you? No, because we're at the beginning of the season. Um, we obviously have quite a clean profile at the moment. Uh, and then as we go through the season, we'll might get more organic matter as, we, as it builds up. Um, and we have to obviously uh, combat that by a bit of raking, scarifying, and then top dressing with sand as well. Uh, the reason it accumulates there is because the sand can't break the, any organic matter down. And yeah. that could be anything as well. Grass clippings, obviously the obvious one. If we can't hoover them up, if, especially if a bit of plants been kicked out, but it can be other not very nice things as well, obviously yeah. from body, people and bodies. So you don't want organic matter as such, is that right? That's a that's that, right. That's yeah. an enemy for you in terms of what you have to do day to day. It, as such, it is. is. It? So it, it, it does one of two things. One one thing it doesn't uh, help the play. So with any players start trying to get grip into the yeah. into the surface, they can't get that yeah. because it's a, there's a slimy top basically. Yeah. And then for us, from a pitch point of view, it also holds the moisture. Mm. So it will base almost. Um, stop your pitch from draining it'll yeah. sit in the top and take a lot longer to go through okay good so like on a farm it's well, organic matter is key but it's, yeah. it's it's an enemy here it's funny yeah. how the difference is it's, it's a very artificially grown pitch this um yeah if we weren't here or we weren't putting the input into it it wouldn't it wouldn't keep going yeah as it is yeah. okay so uh how often do you cut the pitch then typically pretty much every day yeah. um try and keep the height of cut at the same height and we don't want to stress the grass by changing um that height too much yeah so uh, yeah, that's the sort of, sort of every 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 day uh, through the winter. Sometimes we might miss a day, um, but most mostly every day. Yeah. Is there a particular points in the pitch then where there's bigger pressure? Yeah. On so the swords, yeah. Goals, okay, so. Um, we might have disease pressures more up in our top corner. We've yeah. got still quite a small stadium, but um, still brings its slight pressures with the disease. So yeah, top corner where it's all enclosed, no airflow in it. That's the bit we have to check the most yeah. to see when it's coming on. Yeah. And I suppose what's common between farms where we work a lot and, and here is technology. You have precision ag on the roof here on your kabuta. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, uh, yeah, we've you've obviously had... seen a benefit for it. Yes, certainly. I mean, we've had this about our second year now for, for, uh, for having it. Um, we've got it on two tractors here as well. Um, and initially we only got it because we thought um, when we're doing the renovations and seeding into, into clean sand, it's quite, quite difficult to see where you're going. Mm. But from that, we've progressed and obviously you start thinking, oh, okay, what else can you do? So it's become a lot more efficient with spraying, with fertiliser spreading. Mm. Um, but yeah, we never had anything like it before. We thought, well, this is the opportunity when we had a couple of new machines to purchase yeah. to get it. And it's yeah. been brilliant. Yeah, yeah great. Okay. Thanks for showing us around here today. No problem. Thanks so much. Luck. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Right, so Richard, I suppose we're in Bournemouth Football Club here. Um, will you just tell us a small bit about the tractor behind us and the system you have fitted to it? Yes, so what we have here is a Kubota LX401. Um, we've fitted uh, GFX350, Nav900 and uh, Easy Pilot Pro. Perfect. We might just hop into the cab there and yep. show people what we have. So right. It's, it's a, a fairly neat cab anyway, Richard. So you were able to do a nice tidy install? Yeah, extremely tidy. And I, I, was, I was lucky that there was actually space um, just outside of the cab. So minimal wiring in, in the cab. Um, super neat and tidy, despite the fact that there's no space at all. So yeah, I suppose you can see there with the the Sam 200 motor, um, it's a very very neat job. Yeah, it's, it's it's gone in really well, really well. Platform kit obviously was adapted from from, from a bigger Kubota vehicle, um, but it, it's 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 fitted really well. Super, and I suppose you've the 350 screen then. Yeah, nice little people. 350. Um, and it's working well there with the Easy Pilot Pro. Uh, perfectly, perfectly. 
And I suppose you can see the lines there in the background. What kind of correction are they working on here? Uh, so at the moment they're using um, RTX Fast, so you know, 25 millimeter pass to pass accuracy. Um, and like I say, they are absolutely gun barrel. Yeah, no, it, look, it looks super now in fairness. Mm. And then I suppose on the roof we have our NAV 900 and yep. there's been no issues there in, in the stadium using that? No, no issues in the stadium at all. I mean, obviously when you get very close to the, you know, get off the pitch, the, you know, there's a little bit of degradation, but obviously when you get on to the pitch, no, the customers see no issues with, with uh, dropouts at all. Super, and I suppose this customer is the second tr system from us as well. Is it in the same tractor? Or? Yes, so he has a second uh, LX4 uh, 401. Um, this one has the, would have an Easy Pilot motor drive on it, um, which they use um, for seeding on the practice pitches. And I suppose you've no issue there fitting into a nice little, neat little tractor like this anyway? No, it was a bit of a challenge, but yeah, we, we, fa we, we managed to make, make some space. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks super anyway. Thanks for that, Richard. Love it, Joel. Thank you.